Hello boys and girls, moms, dads, teachers. Welcome to Fire Safety from Ian's home. Normally I do this in front of an audience, usually kindergarten to grade three in your library. So I think quite a few of you have seen me before. I've seen probably over 20,000 students over the last three years. So today we're going to talk about fire safety. Now normally I have an audience in front of me and it's interactive. So I want you to shout out things when you're at home, even though you're at home, because there's nobody here except my son who's holding the camera. So, first of all, I'm Ian Hickey. I'm a fire safety, fire prevention officer with the Guelph Fire Department. Prevention's a big word, and prevention means making sure something doesn't happen. So for you little ones, let's say you're riding your bike and you go too fast and you fall down and scrape your elbow, you might learn to slow down to prevent that accident from happening. Do you understand? Okay. So, prevention. So, my job is a few different jobs. I do inspections, so we go to buildings and make sure the buildings are safe so that fires don't happen. So in your school, next time you're in school, look around, you see exit signs and emergency lights, and you, you have a fire alarm system, you have fire drills, six fire drills. Every, every school year you do it six times, so you know what to do in a fire drill. Some of you have sprinkler systems in your schools. Way up in the ceiling, you can see those pipes and the sprinklers. So my job is to make sure all those things are working so everyone's safe. I also do investigations. So if there's a fire, we want to know how it started to make sure it doesn't happen again. Sometimes people might leave a pot on the stove and that starts a fire. So we want to make sure people stay with their cooking so fire accidents don't happen in the kitchen. So I do inspections, investigations, and I teach fire safety. Education is really important. And normally, like I said, my audience is kindergarten to grade three, but everybody's welcome. You older kids too, moms, dads. I even teach fire safety to people who are your grandparents' age. We're never too old to learn about fire safety. So speaking of safety, you may notice all my equipment I brought here today. And for those of you who've seen me, this is something I'll use at the very end of the presentation. It's all my bunker gear, my firefighting gear, protective equipment, keep me safe, just in case we have to go into a building that's burning. So I'm gonna to start today with a story. So even though my audience is usually quite young, I think everybody likes to have a story read to them. And this one's called No Dragons for Tea. All right, so this is a rhyming story, a rhyming book. So I want you to anticipate the words, I'll pause and you'll know what to say next, all right? No dragons for tea. And there are a lot of fire safety messages in this book. See if you can pick up on a few. One warm sunny day at the end of last week, my mom and I went for a walk to the creek. As I raced down the hill in my little red wagon, I veered to the left and smacked into a dragon well, I suppose you could see there was fear in my eyes as I jumped to my feet, quite filled with surprise. He sheepishly grinned and stepped out of the way, but he seemed so polite, I asked him to play. He had a cute bear and some other toys too. With my shovel and pail, we'd have oodles to do. We ran to the creek and then onto the bay where we played on the beach for the rest of the day. Then mom waved and said, now it's time to go eat. Let's pack up the wagon and head up the street. It's hard to stop playing with friends old or new, so I asked if the dragon could come over too. Mom wrinkled her brow and squinted her eyes, looking up at the dragon's incredible size. I begged and I pleaded and I said very sweet, we won't make a mess, we'll be tidy and neat. So at last she said, yes, just this once I'll agree, you may have the dragon come over for tea. Well, we had carrots and apples, thick slices of ham, fresh homemade biscuits and strawberry jam, cold glasses of milk and a great big dill pickle. But the pepper we sprinkled sure made my nose tickle. Then the dragon's nose twitched and he started to wheeze. His eyes misted up and he blew a great, uh-oh, sneeze. Ah, chew! well. We all know what happens when dragons are chew. Flames shot from his mouth and both nostrils too. Our tablecloth sparked and then burst into flame and the curtains that hung right beside did the same. 
The smoke alarm rang. What a loud piercing sound. It meant get out fast. So I dropped to the ground. The room filled with smoke as I crawled on the floor and started to make my way to the front door. The dragon got scared and decided to hide, but I knew when there's fire, we must get outside. I grabbed his thick tail and with one mighty tug, I pulled that big dragon from under the rug. I crept down the hallway and said, follow me. I know the way out. We must meet by the tree. So mom and the dragon and I all met there and that silly old dragon went back for his bear. We ran up and caught him and wouldn't let go. And I said, listen, dragon, here's what you should know. Don't ever go back. That just will not do. We can get a new bear, but we can't replace you. Since the fire was burning inside of our home, we went to the neighbors to borrow the phone. Mom knew what to dial and said, calm and clear. Here's our full street address. Send the fire trucks here. Before very long down our street, they came sailing with bright red lights flashing and sirens wailing. The fire crew rushed to start work on their tasks. They were dressed in big boots and wore helmets and masks. They hooked up the hose and ran into the house where they sprayed streams of water in order to douse. The table, the curtains, our lovely snack too. And it didn't take long before the fire was through. The fire chief called out the door with a shout. The smoke made a mess, but the fire is out. My poor friend, the dragon, knew he was to blame. He hung down his head and wept great tears of shame. One of the fire crew said, don't be sad. You knew what to do and of that we are glad. You all got out safely, that's really what matters. Then she took us to see the fire truck and ladders. The dragon put on a shiny red hat and I asked to see where the fire crew sat. She showed us the siren, the hoses and lights and the ladders they climb up to reach higher heights. The rest of the fire crew checked all the rooms while a fan in the door blew out gray smoke and fumes. Then the dragon and I, we sat down for a while. I reached up and hugged him. He gave me a smile. The next time the dragon and I want to play, we'll pack up a picnic and go to the bay. We are friends tried and true the best we can be, but I'll never again invite a dragon for tea. So here's the dragon's fire safety rhyme. When the smoke alarm sounds, here's what you should do. Leave your toys all behind because there's only one you. Get down and stay low, crawling under the smoke, because breathing those fumes in might make you choke. If your clothes catch on fire, don't run about. Stop, drop, and roll till the flames are all out. Don't open a door if the handle feels hot. Find another way out to your planned meeting spot. Even when scared, you must never hide. And once you are out, don't go back inside. So what happened in that story? Did the dragon try to hide under a rug? Can we hide from fire? No. Did they go out to a meeting place? Yes. Did they stay low to go under the smoke? Yes. Nobody got fire on their clothes so that they didn't have to be stop, drop, and roll. But remember the part about the door handle. So we're gonna talk about that. All right. What's white and round and warms us when there's smoke in our home? If you guessed a smoke alarm, you're right. Do you recognize this? Yes, you all recognize this because we all have to have smoke alarms in our home. We have to have at least one smoke alarm on every level of our home. So if you have a two-story home, you need one upstairs, one on the main level here, and one in the basement, and they all have to be working. So let's say we're in our beds at night and we're all sleeping and it's quiet, our bedroom doors are closed, and all of a sudden all the smoke alarms are beeping. What are we going to do? So, get out of bed, carefully check the door, check the door handle, make sure it's not hot. If it's not hot, open it carefully. No smoke, it's safe to go. So we're heading down the stairs to go outside, but wait, I forgot my favorite stuffy. Is it okay to run back and get your stuffy real quick? No, we don't go back for anything. We have to get outside, stay low if there's smoke, go right outside and go to a planned meeting spot. So that planned meeting spot could be a tree in front of your neighbor's house. It could be a street lamp. It could be a post office, a post, a postal box, um, a mailbox. It could be the neighbor's front porch, but you need to have a meeting place where everyone knows where to meet, okay? So this is something I'd like you to talk to moms and dads about, having an escape plan and making sure you have smoke alarms. So 
your homework is sometime in the next couple of days, go around your home with a grown up and find all the smoke alarms. Now, where do we find smoke alarms? Do we find them on windows? No. Do we find them on doors? No. Do we find them on chairs? I hope not. Do we find smoke alarms on the ceiling? Yes. And why are smoke alarms on the ceiling? Because that's where hot smoke and gases go up to the ceiling first. So that's why the smoke alarms are on the ceiling. So when you go around your home with your grown up and find those smoke alarms, push the test button. Let's see what happens when I push the test button. Is it gonna make a loud beep? Probably. Usually it goes beep, 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 beep. Is it loud? Yeah, it's loud. It has to be loud, right? Because it needs to wake us up when we're sleeping. So find all your smoke alarms, test them. And that's really important. This is what gives you time to get out. A lot of kids say, what if there's fire in the hallway? Well, if your smoke alarms are all working, you should have a chance to get out of your home safely long before there's fire outside your bedroom door. Okay. Now, I've got some pictures I'm gonna show you, and we can have some fun with these. And again, I want you to shout out the answer. So these pictures, I'm gonna show you things you might find in your home or around your home. You tell me whether they're hot, not hot, or maybe hot. Okay, some of them are easy, some of them are tricky, and some are maybe a little bit silly. Okay, is that hot? That's a space heater, and space heaters are definitely hot. We need to stay away from space heaters. Is that hot? Well, an iron's hot when it's plugged in. It's not hot when it's not plugged in, so we don't know until, we don't want to touch an iron. It could be very hot. Is that hot? No. Could that be hot? Yeah, maybe. A bowl of soup's hot, so we usually blow on it before we eat it. Could this be hot? Yes. That's a lighter. So, what do we do if we find a lighter on the school ground? I would ask the students, what do we do? Hands go up, and someone says, we don't touch it, and we tell a grown-up or a teacher. And that's right. If you see a lighter, don't touch it. Tell a teacher. Tell a grown-up, okay? Is that hot? Probably not. Cold glass of water. Could that be hot? Those are matches and they definitely could be hot and they're only for grown-ups. We, we never play with matches. So if you see some matches, tell a grown-up, all right? Could that be hot? Yeah. Everybody has a stove, an oven in their kitchen and that's where most accidents happen. Most fire accidents happen in the kitchen. Could this be hot? Yeah, that's a bathtub. Every, so sometimes the kids are going, no, it's not hot. But what if I only put hot water in there? Would it be too hot? Yeah, it would be too hot. So someone has to make sure it's just right. Well, moms and dads and firefighters, we like this stuff. And teachers too. It's coffee. Is that hot? Yes, it's hot. Some people still make coffee at home. Is that hot? Yeah, if it's in the cupboard, it's not hot. But if it's on the stove, it's very hot. Is this one hot? Sure, that's hot. It's an old barbecue and they get real hot. We need to stay clear of the barbecue. How about this? Is this hot? No. Might be nice on a day like today. Is that hot? That's a lighter too. So a lighter is a tool for grown-ups. We don't play with it. You just leave it and tell a grown-up if you see a lighter on the ground, okay? Is this one hot? No. Okay, this is a tricky one. Hot? Yes. Okay, that's a campfire. Who likes campfire? Hands up if you like campfires. We all like campfires, right? But we need to be safe around the campfire. I go camping with my family and we have a, a campfire every night and we tell stories and sing songs and it's fun and eat s'mores and marshmallows and that's great. But when Officer Ian finishes with the fire, he puts water on the fire until it's out. Okay, we need to put the fire out before we go to sleep. We don't want to start any forest fires, right? Good job. Okay. Now, we were talking about smoke alarms, and we said we want to test them all, make sure we find them all. And we have an escape plan, but that's something you need to talk with moms and dads about, what to do just in case. 
So we might have two ways out, three ways out of your house, but when you go outside, you have to go to a meeting place. That's really important. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about, during the story, mom knew what number to call. What number do we call in an emergency? Yell it out. 911. We know that, right? So phones are easy to find. So if something happens, okay, let me ask you. 911 is for emergencies. Now, let's say uh, I cut my finger and I have a band aid. Should I call 911? No, not for a cut finger. Um, let's say I'm really angry with my brother or sister. Should I call 911? No. What if my puppy's hiding under the couch? Should I call 911? No. What if my babysitter, what if your babysitter fell down the stairs and hit their head so hard you're having trouble waking them up? Should you call 911? Yes, that's a real emergency. So you need to know when somebody's hurt and you need help, you call 911. When you call 911, stay on the phone, stay calm. They'll ask you questions. They'll ask where you live and they'll ask what your emergency is and they'll send either police, fire, or ambulance, okay? So 911 is really important. You have to remember that phone number. Okay, now, one more thing before I wrap it up. I brought all this personal protective equipment. So I might as well put it on and show you what happens when there's a fire alarm in the fire station. So the firefighters in Guelph work 24 hours. They start work at seven in the morning. They're there all day overnight until the next morning. So they live at the fire station. Of course, they're going out and coming back and going out and coming back all day every time someone calls 911 and they need fire trucks. We go to car accidents, we go to fires, we go to help when people are sick, we help the paramedics, the ambulance, with the sick and injured people. Uh, we do a lot of things. If somebody has trouble in the river in Guelph, then we have water rescue teams. We have a lot of specialized teams. If somebody's stuck in a high building, then we have high rescue, high angle rescue teams. So the firefighters in Guelph are very busy. Last year, in 2019, the Guelph Fire Department responded to over 8,000 calls. So we are busy and we leave and come back all day, but we do eat there, we exercise, we train, we practice, we clean our equipment. Every morning when we get to work, we bring out all our equipment to the fire truck. First thing I do is go to my locker and bring out all my personal equipment. So that would be my coat, my face mask, my gloves, my helmet, my hood or balaclava, which is going to keep me safe from sparks. I also have my boots and my pants all rolled up like this together. I bring this all out to the truck. And this is something that's inside the fire truck. So everybody's got one of these. So this is an air pack. It's kind of like a backpack, except my backpack has air in it, right? So I sometimes ask the young children, what do you think is in this bottle? Well, it's air. So this bottle holds enough air to breathe for at least a half an hour and maybe up to an hour. But when we're breathing hard and working hard and exercising, we breathe the air quicker, so we run out of air quickly. So every morning we go in the truck to make sure the air pack is ready to use. Everything's ready. And then the firefighters take the truck outside and they start the truck and put up the ladders and run the lights and sirens and check all the equipment. We have so much equipment on every truck for all these emergencies. And then when everything's checked every day, the truck goes back into the fire station and they start their day. So let's say the firefighters are having lunch. They're sitting around eating lunch and the alarm goes, Somebody has a fire somewhere. So, do you think the firefighters should finish lunch? No, not right now. We'll have to come back to lunch later. So, what we do is we go out to where the fire trucks are, we take off our shoes, and then we get all our gear on. And you can see that this happens pretty quickly. Yes, they do look like snow pants. Put my hood on. Soft and comfortable, but more importantly, it's made of fire resistant material to protect my, my skin from sparks. Put my coat on.
everything else is in the truck. So I would get, get in the truck. Now that the air pack sits in a little pocket behind my seat. So I can go ahead and get in my seat in the front of the truck. Start to put my back, my pack on before we even leave the fire station. All the firefighters are doing this except the driver, putting on their air packs. And when we're all in our seats with our air packs on and our seat belts on, then the driver can take us to where the fire is. So we go leave the station and go to where the fire is. When we get there, we hop out of the truck, and our air pack comes with us. This pack's heavy. With all my gear on, this, all, this gear all weighs about 75 pounds. Now, next thing I need to do is put on my face piece. I have to be tight so it won't leak. My voice is a little muffled, so I'll push that button, and that's a voice activator, voice amplifier, make it easier to understand me. Now my hood needs to come up and over, and that will protect my hair, my ears, and my neck from sparks. A couple more things, my helmet. Tight. Now I'm going to turn my air pack on. When I turn it on, it's going to make some noise, and that's normal, okay? Okay, I see those lights? Those lights are my heads up display. When I put this on, I can see how much air I have in the tank. So the gauge is full, my tank is full. I put my gloves on. Now, meanwhile, we're getting dressed. The driver of the truck has taken a hose off the truck and started a pump so it's full of water and we've got the hose with us at the door. So now we open up the door carefully. We're about to go in and I'm going to put my ear on now. Have any of you ever seen the movie Star Wars? Well, I'm not Darth Vader. I'm your friendly neighborhood firefighter. So we open the door carefully. We got the hose, we have to stay low, well. it's hot, it's smoky, I can't see anything. So we go inside and we follow the path of the smoke and fire. So we listen carefully. Sometimes you can hear the fire, and when we do find the fire, we send our hose and we put water on it. But sometimes the fire spreads somewhere else in the house. We can't see anything. So we have a special camera called a thermal imaging camera, and that helps us see through the smoke to find out where the fire is. We put water on it, but we might have to go upstairs and downstairs, working hard, paying low. Sometimes the fire is in the ceiling, so we have to pull down the ceiling. And this can take a while, so the longer we're in there, the more we breathe. After a while, my air supply starts to go down. After about 20 minutes. Now I still have air left, but I'm going to get a warning from my tank. When my air is running low and no one needs to go outside, this happens. So that, when we hear that, we know it's time for all of us to go out. We never stay in together. We always go out. We're never alone. We get outside and another crew is all dressed up, ready to go in. So we want to rest a little bit. So we're going to take off some of this gear. Cool down, maybe have to drink some water. Now, one more thing. You heard the beeps before. I'll explain what that is. So if I was caught let's say in a basement in a house fire and something fell down on top of me, if I couldn't move, if I was stuck, my, part, my pack will go into alarm. So if it doesn't move for 30 seconds, it starts beeping. And that's a warning to the other firefighters that I'm in trouble. And if I don't move, it gets really, really loud. So as long as I'm moving, 
it's not making that noise. So if I was in trouble, the other firefighters would help me. But I was on the fire trucks for over 15 years. And over those 15 years, no firefighters ever got hurt because we practice hard, we check our equipment, and we work together as a team. And that's really important. So at this point in the fire safety presentation, I would always ask if there were any questions. But obviously, I can't see anybody, so there are no questions to answer. But I hope you've enjoyed the fire safety presentation. And I'm really hoping that I'm going to get back to the school soon and see all those kids in the library, because I love nothing more than going to the schools and presenting to the kids in the library. So have a great summer, moms, dads, kids, and teachers, and hopefully we'll see you next year.